everyone, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of This Is Montreal. Today we're in a neighborhood I've never filmed in before. In fact, I don't even think I've walked through this area before. This is Notre Dame de Grasse, more commonly known as NDG. I'm outside the metro station uh, Vendome. Vendome? Is it Vendome? Apologies, as always, for my French pronunciation, but I'm doing my best. Uh, and you know, so far I can see behind me some quite modern looking buildings. And of course on the other side of me, there's the more classic brick style architecture that you see in lots of older areas of Montreal. I don't know much about this area. Uh, I know that the western side of Montreal typically has more English speakers. So maybe it'll be like an Anglophone community. Uh, I also know that there's a lot of immigrants living in NDG. And with immigrants, usually comes a variety of different kinds of food. So I purposefully skipped lunch. I'll definitely try and get some delicious food in this video at some point. Okay everyone, it's a few minutes after 1 p.m. Look who just showed up. Hello. Lee, welcome to the new travel. Thank you. <laughs> so we just made it to, this is Sherbrook Street, one of the main areas of NDG. Yeah, I guess Sherbrooke Street is a long street, isn't it? Very long, yes. Because <laughs> there's Sherbrooke Street way on the other side of downtown, too. Yeah, so there is Sherbrooke Street East and Sherbrooke Street West, and we are on West. West. Yep. So this mural here is the, um, it's called When I Grow Up, I Want to Be a Kid, which I, I think is really fun because I can relate. <laughs> but yeah. I can definitely relate to that feeling, you know, sometimes it feels like your whole adulthood is like just trying to become a kid again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the better you can do that, the better you are at this whole life thing. Yeah. Well, that's why I want to work with kids. So, uh, kids in the library. So I want to sort of get, give this imagination to them. Yeah. I, I don't think we mentioned that in the video. You, you are, you just finished your master's to become yes. a librarian. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, library and information studies. So I'm an information professional now. And Lee was saying that the Etch-a-Sketch is actually the name of the person who made it, right? Yes. Shop or the tag, I guess. Yeah, the tag. These are officially A-Shop, so the A-Block there. Shout out to A-Shop, you did some good work. Korean church, look at that. Also, Speaking of things that Lee knows, Lee was just mentioning that this expressway once... Well, do you, do you want to tell the story? You know better than me. Yeah, sure. So this is the Dickery Expressway and it was finished uh, around 1966, so just in time for the uh, World Expo in 67. Uh, unfortunately, at the time it did displace a couple hundred of families uh, due to the construction of it and it sort of split Westmount from NDG at the time, so Westmount would be, be the more rich area versus NDG, which is the more middle class area. I, I don't see as much of a difference anymore because NDG is sort of spread beyond those borders, but that's what it used to be. Most of the quote unquote mansions are over in Westmount, but as you can see, there's still a few very beautiful houses in NDG, especially that one in the corner. Actually, you know what, Lee? I think that's a great story to share, the one you were just saying about the, the, the bookstore. bookstore. Yeah. I think it was in the summer of the pandemic. Uh, I was just walking down the street, had to, had to get out of the apartment, needed to walk, and I saw this secondhand bookstore that had been around for a while, and it looked like she was moving uh, locations, which is a brave thing to do during the pandemic. And I was just looking at the books that she was uh, trying to sell last minute to make her move easier, and I happened to see this uh, Winnie the Pooh book set that I had when I was little exact same set and uh, you know I struck up a conversation with her I told her that you know hey I had this set when I was little 
she she gave me a discounted price but I didn't have any money on me at the time and she's you know she told me take it home it's yours pay me back if you can here's my new location here's when we're opening and so I promptly did that and she's got a cute little store now called Phoenix bookstore <laughs> uh, so I, I went back and uh, I keep going back I I'm a sucker for books so obviously I'm a librarian so I'm gonna like books but uh, lovely store that's awesome we just stopped in this park is this just NDG Park? Yep. And beautiful park. Um, yeah, and it's a beautiful day too. 22 degrees Celsius today. Montreal, do you find Montreal gets really hot in the summertime? Um, only for a couple weeks. It's more the humidity that gets me. Yeah, it's the humidity. Really humid. <laughs> yeah. For anyone who is coming in the summertime, let's say you're from America or something, you might assume that Canada is always cold and you don't, you know, you're gonna be fine. Don't underestimate Montreal's humidity. It can get you sometimes. Yep. But if you have a beautiful day like this in the low 20s, perfect weather for exploring a neighborhood. You guys see that? That whole side of the building covered in ivy. I love when they do that. So there's uh, the old Empress Theater over there, which is uh, was built in 1927 in the Egyptian revival art style. Uh, unfortunately condemned right now it's going to be taken down but uh, NDG has sort of asked the community what they want there yeah uh, things like art spaces or homeless shelters so hopefully something good will go there I mean that's a shame they're knocking it down is it just structural issues or I think so yeah, yeah. I was gonna say we should get a hashtag and try to save it but maybe it's too late uh -oh. but it is nice to look at so if you're a fan of old architecture what do you think? Like maybe a year until we don't know? I have no idea. We don't know when it's going to go. So if you want to see this building, you better to get down here quick. Mosaic of Cleopatra. Have you been walls. inside? Yeah, my buddy and I, we were working on it. But they closed it now, huh? Yeah, four or five different people tried to take it over and redo it. But they were all just scammers taking money from the city. Oh, it's too bad. It's a beautiful building, yeah. huh? They're gonna, as far as I know, they're turning it into condos, but they're gonna try and save some of the facade to put it into the old one, but have a good one. Have a good one. So we just stopped by a place called Buffinger? Bowfinger. Bowfinger, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> Simple as it gets. Yep. And you were saying this is kind of a, a well-known spot in NDG? Uh, at least for me, for sure. Really, really excellent sort of barbecue, excellent pulled pork. That's my favorite dish here. Okay, so I was about to put my camera away so I can eat this meal. But first, I got to show you in case you missed it. This is a $9 lunch special, drink included. I mean, that has to be one of the best meals in town. Like, <laughs> look at that. Pulled pork sandwich, fries, drink. I love NDG already. Are you filming a video? Yeah, I'm doing a YouTube video. That's cool. Not your book, the grass. That's the burger spot? Yeah. <laughs> So for the people who don't speak French, Notre Dame de Grasse would mean Our Lady of Grace, yes. right? Notre Boeuf, I guess our beef, beef. <laughs> our beef of grace. <laughs> nice little play on words there. So it's uh, La Louisiane. Uh, it's a nice Cajun slash soul food restaurant. Uh, I, I grew up in the southern United States, so I, it's more of the food I'm used to. Uh, lovely flavors. I didn't know this originally. Uh, we just, I just found this out over lunch that Lee grew up in the States. Yes. And how old were you when you moved to Montreal? Uh, 19. 19. Yeah. And what was your first impression coming from the United States to Montreal? So I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was just a bunch of farmers and moving to Montreal, there are so many world cultures that we got to experience. And it's just diving deep into that. I loved it. Love it for sight, really. So yeah. Cosmo. I mean, somehow it seems like, like when I moved to Montreal, there's like a few neighborhoods I was thinking of. Somehow I think NDG flew under the radar. <laughs> but now that I'm here, this is, this is a happening spot. Yeah. 
So Grand Burger Boulevard is right off of Grand Boulevard. <laughs> you like your puns here in NDG? Yes, we do. <laughs> So Lee was saying this one is called Our Lady Grace, of course named after Notre Dame de Grasse. Yep. And this was uh, the city gave them a hundred percent leeway creativity, so they they really could do. What That's they beautiful liked. interpretation. Yeah. It's huge too. Look at that guy standing underneath. I mean, if he's six feet, that's like, you know, that's at least 60 feet tall. That's crazy. That's cool. Yeah. I like walking by here to see how they're growing. <laughs> Red glass building, that's uh, the big library, big fancy new library. This one is... Do you Benny know Library. Benny Library. Yeah. Well, if anyone at Benny Library is watching, don't forget, Very Lee's good. resume is in the description. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice place. Sky blue. Probably confuses some birds, right? <laughs> okay, because this is the only time I might ever be walking with a future librarian next to a library. <laughs> Is there any like misconception about librarians or libraries you'd like to, or any thoughts you'd like to share about libraries? Because I feel like this is a world a lot of people don't know that much about. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, we don't read books all day. We don't have the time. Uh, we don't shelf books, so we have other workers for that. Um, and I'd say the main misconception about libraries now is people think it's a place where you be quiet and you read books, but that's not the case anymore. It's it's sometimes quite noisy. There's tons of events. You can 3D print in there. It's it's really a community space now. So uh, go to your local library. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope everyone has been enjoying this video. We are almost done. I'm actually gonna say goodbye to Lee here, and I'm gonna take a little walk down Monkland Avenue. Mm -hmm. But first, I got to give a big thank you to Lee, your passion for NDG shows, so. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. I just wanted the opportunity to show NDG. I don't think it gets shown very often, and I just, maybe more people will come experience what it has to offer. So, that'd be yeah. great. Come eat some good food. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Elbow bomb. Elbow bomb. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this was episode number five of the This Is Montreal series. Uh, the first episode I did on my own and I explored Rosemont. After that, we went to uh, Hochelaga with Pierre. After that, we went to Verdun with Elizabeth. Then we went over to The Point. That's a little neighborhood. I explored that with Christian. And of course, today we explored NDG with Lee. I actually tried mapping out the rough route that we took today. You can see here, we started by the Vendome Metro Station. We walked up towards Sherbrooke Street, uh, that corner there by the gas station. That's where we saw the first piece of artwork. Uh, then I believe we went up North Cliff. Uh, then we took a walk down here, down Chemin de la Côte, across the highway. Uh, then we went over to NDG Park, walked down here. This is roughly where we saw the Egyptian architecture. If I can figure out how to save that map, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, so you can find out how to do a tour like this on your own. Uh, and speaking of the tour, big thank you to Lee once again. Uh, you know, I asked her off camera if she had anything to promote. She literally just said, no, I just want to share NDG. You know, I, I like my neighborhood. So I think that's a cool thing about Montreal. There's a lot of people who are proud of their neighborhood and just want to share it. So much so, in fact, that I have been receiving a crazy amount of emails and messages from people who want to share their neighborhoods. I think I got three or four different people asking about NDG. Apologies to anyone who reached out to me who I didn't get back to. Uh, I, I try to respond to messages, but sometimes it's like overwhelming and there's too many and I just can't get to everyone. For anyone who's into cameras, I did something different this time. I filmed a video with this camera, which is the Sony ZV-1. 
Uh, it's a quite small setup. Of course, it's got the huge mic on top, but uh, compared to my usual setup, which is the uh, Canon DSLR camera with the huge mic on top and the huge tripod, uh, you know, when you're walking for three or four hours, it starts to make a big difference whether you have like the five pound setup or the two pound setup. Uh, so today I tried using the smaller camera and I gotta say I wasn't that impressed. Uh, I felt like some of the footage uh, was very shaky. I tried to fix it by having like b-roll shots over some of the bad parts but overall I think this video was shakier and a bit Mm, I don't know, the footage just wasn't quite at the quality that I like to have that. And yeah, speaking of cameras and stuff, uh, part of the reason I didn't use my Canon camera in this video is that uh, I was having an audio issue, like this audio input was broken. So yeah, I've just been having technical problems with my camera. Uh, I talked to Canon to try to get it fixed and they were like, ship your camera to Ontario. You need to pay $50 to ship it out there and then you need to pay us $200 to diagnose your camera and then maybe you're even paying more for the repair. And I'm just like, what the heck, Cam Canon? This is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I don't have that much time or money to like give away my camera for the whole summer. So I started looking at alternative options and I found this place called uh, Electro Adam. <laughs> it's just this guy named Adam. Uh, he moved to Montreal, he's an immigrant from Morocco and he like fixes cameras out of his home. Uh, and he did a great job. He was cheaper and fa much, much faster than Canon would have been. So uh, I wanted to give him a shout out. His shop will also be linked in the description. And speaking of the description, uh, you can also find ways to support my channel if that interests you, uh, either by following the Patreon page, which is linked below, or by clicking the join button and becoming a member of the new travel. Uh, for a few dollars a month, you can help keep my belly full of these pork sandwiches. Seriously, even a few bucks a month, it uh, makes a big difference and it's always appreciated. So, and yeah, as always, just want to say thank you to everyone who made it all the way to the end of the video. Uh, that helps YouTube to share my video to more people. And it always uh, makes me smile to know you people are out there. Leave a, leave a turtle in the comment section if you made it all the way to the end. <laughs> Let me know who's out there. And yeah, as always, I'm Dan from The New Travel. I'll see you next time.